From Eagle Scout projects that improve our community to helping the Richland Police Department prevent crimes of opportunity. These stories and so much more straight ahead on Richland Now. Hello and welcome to the latest edition of Richland Now. I'm Gail Everett. In our latest City Corner program, Richland City Manager Cindy Rents shared that one of the three biggest projects City Council is working on in 2016 is the Duper Tail Bridge project. The city received $20 million from the state as part of the recent gas tax increase, but we're still in need of about $18 million to complete the funding package. To support finalizing the foundation design for the Dupertail Bridge project, members of the city's consultant design group have been conducting subsurface explorations. This work began January 25th and will last one to two weeks. Several different exploration methods were used, including deep sonic boring to roughly 130 feet deep, conventional drilling and sampling, and backhoe excavated test pits. The sonic boring method produces vibrations that can be felt approximately 50 feet from the boring locations. The vibrations will not damage any nearby structures. City staff and equipment will be supporting the test pit excavations. We are happy to share that our community is once again the beneficiary of not one, but two Eagle Scout projects. We certainly feel fortunate when a Boy Scout chooses to partner with the city on a project, as they can choose to partner with any number of organizations. So thank you to Kyle Mahaffey. He chose to focus his efforts at Chaparral Park. He removed the old basketball court and constructed a new concrete court and even refurbished the backboard. Chaparral Park is a three-acre park located on Timmerman Drive off of Leslie Road. Michael Hazel chose W.E. Johnson Park Archery Range for his Eagle project. Michael constructed a beautiful shelter at the Archery Range that will definitely improve the park's visitors' experience. W.E. Johnson Park is a 236-acre park located on Hall Road off of Van Giesen on the west side of the Bypass Highway. Thank you both for your efforts to find, plan, organize, and implement these projects to improve our community. Will all Richland School District principals, assistant principals, and administrative assistants attended emergency protocol training last week at Benton County Emergency Services? Richland officers were joined by other local agencies in leading the sessions that focused on the response tactics needed if an armed intruder comes on campus. Richland Superintendent Rick Schulte said that these trainings are part of the district's ongoing efforts to help our school administrators be as prepared as possible for a worst case scenario. The Richland Police Department does have student resource officers assigned to the local high schools. The SROs often patrol our middle and elementary schools as well. These officers are in the schools basically any time students are in the school, but primarily between the hours of 7 to 4 p.m. During the school day, they act as police officers, counselors, and guest speakers in classrooms. They also address crimes in the school, such as drugs, thefts, harassments, and do follow-up investigations and interviews with students who are contacted outside of school hours. Well, how well are you supporting the Richland Police Department in preventing crimes of opportunity? Year in and year out, our crime statistics are some of the lowest in the state, and we're very proud that the community policing strategies that our police department have put into place are succeeding. But they want you to know that as a community member, you are partners in these strategies and your assistance is needed in securing your vehicle and homes, making it harder for criminal activity to occur. In 2015, more than 70% of all car prowls were from unlocked vehicles. This means that vehicles are predominantly entered without force. If you leave your vehicle unlocked and valuables inside, you may as well put a sign on your car inviting thieves to steal from you. Please err on the side of caution and remember, lock it or lose it. I'm sure you're familiar with the massive blizzard that recently ripped through the East Coast. That catastrophe led our Energy Services Department to reach out to us and share some power outage safety tips with you. High winds and winter storms occasionally cause extended power outages right here in Richland. Richland Energy Services crews are on call around the clock to restore power as quickly as possible. In cold winter weather, planning ahead will ensure your comfort and safety. 
Here are some tips to help you be prepared. Have supplies like flashlights, batteries, gloves, food that doesn't require heating or refrigeration, and water readily available. Please visit the link at the bottom of your screen for more safety tips. When you receive your February utility bill, you will notice some information on how to participate in a solid waste survey. The survey is open on SurveyMonkey and can be accessed by residents anytime between February 1st and March 15th. If you do not have internet access or you prefer a paper copy of the survey, please call 942-7491 and one will be mailed to you. We do ask you to please take a moment to complete the short seven question survey. Your answers will help guide our review of current and future services. Very important that you respond. Well, spring is just around the corner and when the Richland National Little League season begins, our athletes will have an upgraded field to play in. Get your bat flip dialed in because 2F Enterprises is installing a new outfield fence on one of the Little League fields located at Claybell Park. The fence will be chain link with a 200 foot radius. The field and the fence will be ready for spring practice. If you have questions or would like more information on the stories you've seen here, please visit the City of Richland's webpage. And if you are not following the City of Richland on Facebook, I strongly encourage you to do so. Our Facebook page is updated daily and is a great source for community information. I'm Gail Everett and I thank you for watching this edition of Richland Now.